So our first topic today is going to be about lane-based driving behavior. So setting up your driving behavior is an essential part of any model. And there's a new feature starting in this in 2020 where you can actually set this driving behavior to be on individual lanes. So in previous versions, by default, the driving behavior would apply to a link as a whole. So all of the vehicles would essentially have the same behavior as soon as they enter that link. But again, starting in 2020, this behavior can now be applied on the lanes so that vehicle driving in a particular lane uh, behavior could vary. So as part of the setup, the first item that you're going to want to adjust is going to be your actual driving behaviors. And these will be set up within the base data menu. So you'll just click on base data and go down to driving behaviors to open up that driving behavior list. In here, you can add um, additional driving behaviors. You can duplicate existing ones and make tweaks. And then these driving behaviors then get applied to a link behavior type. So this, again, can be found under that base data menu. And within the link behavior types, uh, this is where you can add additional ones. So you can just click the plus button here to add a new behavior type. And then you can map that and assign it to those driving behaviors that you just created. And then once you have that link behavior all set up, this can then be applied on the link level. So you'll just go in and edit your link or connector. And once that link window will open up, the default behavior that's set up for the entire link will still be stored on that same attribute, which is called link behavior type. And then under the lanes themselves, so down in this lane tab, there's a new attribute called link behavior type down here. And for each of the individual lanes, you can just select this dropdown and choose those link behaviors that were just defined. And any of these lanes that are just left blank will just reference that default link behavior type that was defined up above. So here is a list of just some potential use cases where lane-based driving behavior could be implemented. So the first one here is for any dedicated lane modeling. So this would be useful if you wanted to set up connected vehicles in a platoon or look at autonomous vehicles or perhaps electric vehicles that are only going to operate in a specific lane traveling along your roadway. This could also be used to model work zones where you're going to have narrow lanes and maybe vehicles in that are closer to that work zone area are going to behave in a different manner. And then also for modeling incidents. So any vehicles that are on adjacent lanes, maybe traveling close to an incident, their headway values may change and they may also be more prone to driving errors such as lack of attention or distraction. And so by using this lane-based driving behavior, you can just apply it to a single area on that particular lane, rather than having the entire lane be impacted. And then one question that we wanted to bring up today is, maybe now with this new behavior type, calibration could actually be done on a lane-by-lane -lane basis, rather than at the link level. And so this, we just want to make sure that this is just an option for people to think about. Um, it's not something that everyone needs to go out and immediately go and tweak your models to do this, but it's just one topic that we wanted to throw out to modelers um, and just make people aware that now with this new behavior type, um, you may be able to actually calibrate your models on a lane basis. And in this case, we're just going to look at one example here of a freeway merging and weaving area. And for this implementation, we are going to look at maybe making these lanes that are closer to the merge area be a little bit more cooperative with longer headways to allow 
traffic from the on-ramp to enter the main line, and then have lanes that are farther away from that merge area to be a little bit more aggressive and maybe have some of those shorter headways. So here is the example model we'll take a look at today. So we have our main line volume here, so about 8,000 cars per hour. And then we have about 1,700 vehicles per hour that will be entering via this on-ramp. So the main line itself, for the most part, is four lanes wide, and the on-ramp is two lanes. So we have this section of this freeway merging area here, which increases to six lanes, and then it will drop back down to four lanes. So in this example, we're looking at two different scenarios. Our first scenario here is going to have the setup where all of the lanes have the same driving behavior. And the second scenario will have different behaviors based on those individual lanes. So in this case, we're just going to look at two different driving behavior parameters. And of course, more could be adjusted um, as needed. But for this scenario, scenario, we're just going to look at changing the CC1 value, which is the headway, and also the safety distance reduction factor for vehicle lane changes. So for that first scenario where all of the lanes have the same behavior, that headway will be set to 1.2 seconds with a safety distance reduction factor of 0.3. And for the second scenario, we have this broken up by lanes. So here you can see this will be the main merge lane where the on-ramp traffic will enter. And then we have um, the following lanes, so plus one, plus two, and plus three. So for each of these lanes, as we get farther away from the merge lane, we're going to drop down the headways by a tenth of a second. And then the safety distance reduction factor will increase by five hundredths each time. So let's go ahead and take a look at our model here. And to save some time, we did run this a little bit already just to get vehicles into the system. So we have, again, our first scenario is at the bottom. So we just kind of created a copy just so that we can easily compare the two cases. So on our merge, area here, you can see for scenario one, we just have the default link behavior type set to freeway. And then we didn't apply any different behaviors to any of the lanes. So they'll all just reference that base freeway link behavior type. And then for scenario two, here's where we applied <coughs> some of those different link behavior type. So you'll see, again, any of these that are left blank will just reference that base freeway merge dri driving behavior, whereas uh, the other lanes will reference um, their own individual behaviors. And then one way that this can be visualized is through the graphic parameters. So if you just select um, kind of this little colored box next to links, I'm just going to briefly change the drawing mode here to use a color scheme. And for this color scheme right now, we're just looking at that lane behavior type. And based on the number of that behavior, we've defined some different colors here. So this will just allow you to quickly see how that each lane has its own behavior type defined. And then you'll see down here for scenario one where all of the colors are the same. So now I'm going to just switch that off so that we can take a look at some other items. So when we were running this model, um, of course, one thing that we wanted to set up were some different evaluation measures so we could see how the performance would change uh, for each of these scenarios. So we set up a couple of different objects. So we have some data collection points that are um, occurring right here after all of the merging has taken place, and then uh, right before, and we have them set up for each scenario. And then we also have 
vehicle travel time segment set up so that we can count the number of vehicles on both the main line and the on-ramp. And so these data collection labels that we have set up are just showing the percentage of lane utilization. And so essentially all of these are using a user-defined attribute that we created, which takes a look at the individual lane data collection point we've set up and just divides it by the sum for that particular set for that group grouping pair. And then the vehicle travel times are similarly using a UDA just so that we can display the vehicles along with some text. So all of the user-defined attributes can be set up under base data. And here I'll just pull up one option for displaying that travel time label. So in this case, we just have the user-defined attribute set up to be a text string. And then in here, we can reference different attributes within that object. So here you can see where we're pulling the name and then grabbing all of the vehicles that are going by that particular area. And then we're appending some additional text here. So these UDAs are a really powerful tool just so that you can quickly append uh, various attributes and show those in the label rather than having it strictly defined to a single attribute for that object type. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and let this play. And here you can see um, some of the, the differences between these two scenarios. So of course, this is just a single seed, and we are just testing a couple of different parameters. So it's hard to draw any specific conclusions from here, but we did start to see some trends, uh, specifically that for in the second scenario where we have uh, kind of a more aggressive lane change behavior set up for the leftmost lanes furthest away from the merge, we are able to get more vehicles through on both the main line and the on-ramp. And then you can also see a slightly different spread in the lane utilization. So you can see that more vehicles are utilizing those leftmost lanes. Whereas for scenario one, where we have that same driving behavior set up, the lane utilization is pretty much set and consistent for lanes two, three, and four. So again, this is just uh, one option to think about, but we just wanted to throw out this feature and just um, let everyone know that it's new starting in 2020, so you can take a look and see how that can be implemented within your models.